Okay, so welcome to the Q&A for informal, just organized right now, right? So the question earlier was about normalization. So I'm going to ask you and whoever I'm sure among you, there are statistical service. So I'll answer, what does the normalization do? If you have a distribution, a one dimensional distribution, let's imagine that it is a Gaussian. What does normalization means in this case? Does it affect the width of the distribution? Uh, should I answer? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yes, I, for for me, before you you, you apply, you, you apply, you no, know, before you 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 will think about to normalize your data or not, you have to take a, for account uh, the type of data that you are dealing with and uh, maybe the size also of the, of the data. Yeah, so true if, of course, so so the question is that, so you know what it, what it means shifting. So if you shift, if you translate the distribution, what does it mean? Uh, let's talk about one dimensional, just Gaussian distribution. Okay. okay. Uh, no, for this question, I think I, I don't have. <laughs> No, it's okay. As like some people are answering there, that's true. So whenever you do the translation, you're basically changing the mean, right? Yes, so, so you're kind of moving like the kind of, that's why it's called, just you, you can translate. When you do normalize, I think these are all, you're dividing by a constant, right? Yeah. And that constant is an important parameter on its own. It tells you a lot about, especially if you are comparing it with another distribution, it really is important variable. But normally on its own, you might not need it, especially if you don't have the power to measure it. So that power comes if you can't, for example, sample from the whole data, that that, that actual uh, kind of height is not really just the height, it's more relative. So if you if you are if you are not sure about the sample size um, and its representativeness, that information or the actual kind of height at that point is not that important because you're basically that information is not captured. Okay, so so that is so and, and just it doesn't affect the width. That's true. Change the observation, but rather affects the height. Yes, I think that's correct. So, but basically, like in observation, when you, when you are, it's, it's, it's kind of a constant. It's a, that constant is data. You have to know that constant isn't anything. It is data. It's just the reliability of that data is is it important? So, if you are comparing it with another data, it's so sometimes that that is very important. You know, at which height you measured, for example, um, the air to air pressure is very key. So you yeah. cannot just you know, you sometimes, but if you are uncertain about that, instead of actually including that that uh, height information, for example, at which height you measure air pressure, you might just try to take it just the difference. With respect to its own height, let's imagine there is some height, with respect to its own height, how far is the air pressure? So it's kind of like gives you kind of a normalized quantity. So that means it doesn't take into account their differences in height. So in this case, by height, I'm just referring to like altitude, it could be, but data has all the time. Brightness, for example, if it's a picture. You know, if you don't know, two pictures are taken at different brightness. So if you know at which brightness level they are taken, you read that data. So you have to keep that. If you really are aware and there is no uncertainty on that, you probably should keep that because the lightness tells you about, you know, day over or night, right? So day or night is in this case, just a good data, right? Yeah, but yeah. If, if you don't know, sometimes it's better if you don't really know and if you can't be sure, it's better just to normalize it out such that you, you, you throw out that information. So most of the time, because we don't know, we, if, if we're heterogeneous data, that's what we do. We throw it because we assume it's un unmeasurable or unreliable. Hopefully that answers. So anybody else? But, Any but questions? Uh, yes. yes. 
the, 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 there is a problem for me. Yeah. That the, the, the problem is that if you if you force your 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 variable to follow a, a normal distribution, maybe uh, your firstly the, 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 the right of the, the great distribution for your data may be a Poisson distribution or maybe uh, how can I say now a gamma distribution something like that. Uh, so by 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 forcing your data to follow a a normal who, who, who is, who's who's forcing of who's forcing I think it doesn't change the the distribution we say it we agreed it doesn't change the distribution only transformations change so mm -hmm. that means transformation means any functional transformation each data point separately will change the distribution the normalization is just a constant multiplication or division okay. Okay, so so, so so the formula of the uh, uh, no the formula behind the, the algorithm of normalization is to divide it by the standard deviation and to subtract the mean, right? Is it that no, no, like normally that's called uh, both you are centralizing it as well as normalizing it. Okay, so, okay. Great. So when you do when you centralize it, it means you are subtracting the mean. And then when you divide it with a standard deviation, then you kind of, yeah, it's kind of, you give, it's a unit, you give it a unit. That means each value will have a unit of a standard deviation. Okay, but thank, thank you. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I'm so, so, of course, be careful whenever you do any transformation, you know, but what is given, what, what you know, when you extract inside, sometimes it's a, a univariate. So, who can tell me the difference between univariate and bivariate analysis? Okay, U univariate take for account. Yeah, let's let's give it also to other people so that okay. just other people can participate. But, but thanks, Christian. But I'll I'll get to you. But like, let's just make it more multi-conversational. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, Zalalem. Or, and then we can Michael later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, univariate analysis deals with uh, one variable. In our case, when we have a data frame, uh, each column represents uh, one variable. So we analyze that uh, uh, values in that uh, variable or column. So most of the time, I think we use histogram, mm -hmm. or uh, if there are small. Uh, Categorical types, maybe we can use pie chart or something to show the distribution of each value in that uh, variable. And uh, when we use bivariate, we are searching for a relationship between two variables or two columns. So I think maybe scatter plot or something like that can be used to show the relationship uh, or a trend between to variables, if there is any correlation or not, something like this. I think this is the difference. Okay, yeah. Michael, you wanna add something? Yeah. So um, I, I think basically for univariate um, analysis, you are actually looking at, let's say, the statistics that comes out of that particular, um, the, the, the data that is held in that particular variable. And um, when you are, trying to, when you do bivariate, you are trying to see how one variable relates to another. So if you are looking at the, um, the, the relationship between um, more than two variables, then you can, you now get multivariate um, uh, uh, analysis. And for example, if maybe you, there are some univariate analysis where you can incorporate a multivariate um, uh, analysis. For example, if you are plotting a, 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 a bar chart for, um, let's say, if you are, let's say, um, a particular variable, and then you can color code it with another variable. So you are plotting the number of people in a classroom. So you can also color code it and then get a, um, get a color for the boys in the classroom and then the girls in the classroom. Uh, traditionally, when you look at a bar, a bar plot, um, sorry, a bar graph, is usually is just for um, a univariate analysis, but when you incorporate this, you kind of get the relationship between the number of people in the classroom and then the gender as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. Thanks. I think these are all great. Uh, but Blaze, do you want to add something? 
No, I think he, Michael has done pretty a good job explaining it. Okay, so I think all of you, what you said is good. And most importantly, it's about information, right? So if you think of information by doing univariate, so some, I think there's some noise and someone mute. Is that Michael? Okay. So uh, it's about you lose information. It's like when you are doing it on one variable, what you gain is information. I mean, it's easy understanding. If you just plot a histogram, it's much easier. Okay, where is it high, where is it low? You know, how is it distributed? But of course, the problem is that you forget uh, that there, there are other informations that are, not, that are important, but that are not incorporated. When you add by variable, that means another variable relationship, then you start seeing those relations. So that means, let's imagine rain um, and sun. So of course, like if you just only like the distribution of sun, um, or the, the amount of cloud, for example. So if, if you're just basically seeing is like you may say like, oh, okay, you know, just uh, rains are very, like if, if it's just in summer, the days, then you say like, oh, cloud, like, like you, you always have like sun. So in that case, like you have, most of your days are kind of sunny. And then if you use that one to predict, you know, what is gonna be in one month, then you might say like, I mean, I will just give you the mean. The mean is like um, a good number to give, and, and that is, that's gonna be sunny. But then if you, had, if, you for, if you had actually looked at it, probably clouds are kind of, let's say, uh, a kind of re, hi, highly correlates with sun. So that means in one month, there might be like a huge excess cloud. So, if you use that data, you might actually change your prediction. You might say like, oh no, even if my mean, the now the sample says that I'm gonna be, you know, like it's gonna be sunny, but given the correlation, which is that clouds also induce like kind of decrease, there is a, a negative correlation, um, sun, and therefore in one month, and I know that the cloud is gonna be high, therefore the day will be kind of, uh, even if it's at a tail now, in my data, kind of rain was not predicted or low sun amount was not predicted, but because of that, you know, it's going to be uh, not sun. So that is how you lose, inf like it's kind of when you do bivariate, you gain more information. Things that might be underrepresented in your data, but because of the relationship you would gain, uh, you'd have insight. So everything what Zalala and Michael said, plus the other kind of motivation why you do bivariate or multivariate, is because of those kind of understanding um, relationships. Um, so, okay, so let's let's go on to other questions. If you have any question, Blaze, did you raise again your hand or is that from the old time? Oh, yes, yes, I do have a question. Actually, okay. it's more of a clarification. Okay, looking at the task, like the, the how the description of the task, there's one thing I was particularly not sure about. If you look at task 1.1, 1 .1, uh, it states about how we should probably uh, Impute using the mean. Yeah. But I think if we do that for most of the values, we probably may be losing into some data which is quite keen into some analytics. So, for example, if we look at that, the portion that talks about just let me take a look into the data. Hmm. So it's 1.1, 1 .1, is The eight. number of seconds. Which, yeah. which one? I just, one. Uh, if you look at, hmm, it talks about, oh, sorry, it's 1.2. I will okay. conduct the idea and treat all these values and apply as a dot set by replacing by the mean of the corresponding column. So I think, for example, if we take a look at, let's say, for example, the column, the number of seconds with IP volume downloads less than 600 to 50 bytes. If mm -hmm. you are to impute using the mean, don't you think that would actually be inaccurate? So let's say, for example, the person never got to, the, uh, to, to that, let's say, for example, the IP volume. Let's say it never got to that. So if we impute by the mean, the data set may have, like let's say we may lose, may get a false, a false, let's say, what's what I'm looking for? A false uh, representation of what the data set is. Uh, so my question is, how, should we just probably use our own methods of imputing this missing values and sticking to the means? Since there's some columns, the mean may track and others, the mean may just give you a misrepresentation of what's really meant to be there. So 
you know that the what is so what why do we miss value uh, why do we feel missing values just let me ask you please uh because we need Oh. We need to understand some data. They probably we put in various ways in how we can fill in the missing values because we need but, but why some, do, some why form do of representation. Is it because we believe that we will we will get a good result, or is it because we you know it has to be done, or is it to make analysis easier? Why why do we do that? I think it depends on what a person wants. For example, I think sometimes the problem is filling in can actually make analysis easier. Sometimes also filling in the values in that same case can make maybe your predictions probably you just want to compute and make a baseline okay. prediction. When when do you think that missing filling missing values improves analysis? I think filling in the missing values to improve analysis is when, for example, you already know what why the why the value is missing. Exactly. So that means when you can add information to that to that. That means when there is when you have an information or a prior information. In this case, if you are talking Bayesian uh, statistics, if you have a prior information that is not included in the data, that you can actually add and improve, like the the information content. So so normally you could just even throw, but then if you throw, but then the, the other parts are not missing, so you're probably kind of reducing the data. So actually, by just if it is very few. One has to do many of them. They have to do the simplest. That means the one that doesn't bias. One has to throw, assuming reducing the data. And one has to do when they add information. Like when you add information yourself, you're really biasing it because that you are kind of inventing data yourself, right? So that's why most of the time the simplest is the better. The simplest means throwing is better, because then at least, as if you don't, you didn't observe it. But that problem becomes, if especially the number of missing values are high, it becomes unfeasible. So this, like, it isn't about complicated feeling. It's about really not to disturb the data as much as possible is the key. And you're right. Even mean can disturb it unless you know mean doesn't make sense if it's not a Gaussian distribution. So sometimes it's more, sometimes it's median, sometimes it's if you have even more information, more, right? But I would say right now, don't too much like worry about only what what kind of missing value, like you know, if I use different missing values, did it change? It's called sensitivity test. So think of that way instead of like assuming that you might you might get a better result, or you might, you know, you might apply your own technique. So if you are advanced, it's fine, but know that any missing value treatment is just a bias. That means you are inventing. So the simplest and most accurate normally is throwing if you don't, if it doesn't affect your analysis. If the data is so much or if the missing value are very little. Okay, thanks. I think that clarifies actually makes sense. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Kate? Hello. Hello. Um, I just had a follow-up question. Yeah. Um, doesn't it depend on the nature of the columns? For example, in our data set where we have the um, ID column and we have about 900 missing values, isn't it? Would it be more accurate to drop those uh, rows rather than try and yeah. fill, back fill? Yeah. I think so. I think that's where I was saying it's important. The most important part as a data scientist is, is kind of a data guru is to not believe any method, but to try different methods and see how much your result changes. If your result changes on, on how you treat the missing value, then something is wrong. So that, that means your confidence level should go down because you are inventing, you are influencing the analysis, right? So the yeah. most important thing is if, if your additional cosmetics that you are adding to simplify your analysis is not changing the actual result or the result is robust against them, then you say, great. So for example, you know, if you throw the missing values 
or if you fill them by a median or mode or by the appropriate one. And if the result is just only a marginal change, then you're saying like, okay, you know, the sensitivity test tells me that my result is independent of the, how I feel the missing value, but of course I get a better, easy analysis and result when I do this, when I apply this missing value treatment. Okay, thank you. No worries. Anyone else? Yes, can I ask a question? Yeah, maybe you. Okay. My question is uh, on how to handle the missing value. Okay. Uh, one of the way to handle missing value is first uh, checking the skewness of the data. So for example, if the skewness of a column is positive, positive 10, uh, what should we use to handle the missing value? Is it mean or median? I think I would, say, I would say more median. If the data is skewed or not Gaussian, median is a better um, sample. Mean and median becomes the same if it's Gaussian. If not, usually median or mode is better. But, okay, for if the, there is a range, yes, for a skewness number, for example, there is 0 0.2 or 5 or 10. But even the skewness, really is measured against a central tendency. That means if it's only just yes. uh, with respect to, you know, if it's just a Gaussian deviation, you yeah. could transform it and you could make it Gaussian if that is the case. But if it's not Gaussian, it could be just a completely different distribution. Even that doesn't make sense, right? So I think the most important part is still, that's why we, we don't try too much to be inventive around the missing values at least most of the time, we just rely on whether, if we use like simple versus non-simple methods, whether our result greatly changes. If greatly changes, then you really have to work hard to convince anyone that your analysis makes sense. Because then, you know, you are inventing. You are inventing, you know, you, you are changing the data. So you are not extracting what the data tells you, but you are actually telling the data what you want which is basically called a difference. So that's why I would say um, around missing value have pragmatic views and only apply them for like for what you want. For example, in the case if you are working on a medical data, sometimes you have very few data and you really, really have to be kind of creative around missing value by adding multiple other information. Let's say by looking at multivariate uh, cases, correlations, and using actually to feel through correlation. So that means earlier, as I said, you know, it's like if, if you know that rain, like cloud and the cloud coverage or the cloud amount, let's say, and the, like the brightness, the day brightness or the sun amount is correlated. And if there is one day that is missing that you didn't measure the brightness of the sun, maybe instead of trying to feel median in the mode, the better is, it's like if you look at just kind of the its correlation and kind of quantifying the correlation amount and using that to feel. So that's a bit more complex, but it's it's kind of you 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 get to that direction because you know you know it's it's a an additional information that you have, right? So I would say uh, don't be too precise about missing values because there is no method you are in any way inventing a data that you didn't measure. So hopefully that answers. So I would say okay. if it's too much skewed, don't trust any of this. So try to be, try to use mode. If, if okay. it's like kind of a category variable, if not some kind of simple linear regression, because the simpler it is, at least the better it is. Because the simpler it is, it's interpretable. The complexities, it's un uninterpretable. And that makes uh, interpretation very complex. You know, then you don't know if it is you who, who get, who kind of forces the result or if the data is saying the result. Okay. Can, can I ask another question also? Go on, yeah. I, I don't know if it's answered, uh, but is it conventional to drop uh, a column if missing value is more than yeah. 30% Absolutely. in the column? Yeah, sure. Okay. It, it, is, it is important. It is important not to bias. So that means if something is too much missing, then there's no point including it because you basically are not measuring it. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, now Christian.
and then uh, Tadesse. Yes, please, sir. Uh, I would like also to ask you about something. Uh, in, in, the, in the case that I have, uh, maybe I, I, I make an histogram of my, my, my variables and I notice that there are two tuners. Maybe there are two uh, the screeners, the right screeners, and the, the, the left screeners. Mm -hmm. Yes. In this case, uh, should I normalize also this kind of data or which kind yeah, of I mean, advice? Should, 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 uh, I think this is information. So you cannot throw it out. So that means it's telling you that if it is left skewed, that means that there is a tail in the left. If okay. it's a right skewed, it basically tells you there is a tail. That means like more, like for example, a call, it's a gamma distributed, right? So it's kind yeah. of like the the time arrival between two calls. It's kind of the number of like that you have to wait to get, I don't know, five calls, for example, or n calls is a gamma distributed. A gamma is a very, sometimes a tail. Or exponential distribution is, is again a tail. Right, so so, but that is information, so you can't okay. just throw that because that's if it's complete, then you lose information. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so Tadessa, hello, uh, could I continue? Yeah, you can. Uh, I think uh, from Abu uh, Bakr's uh, tutorial, we have seen some insights on the data he is processing on diabetic data. Yep. So, is we going to do uh, the familiar things, the code which are familiar with this uh, tutor uh, by using the data you have provided us, or uh, is it a little bit different? I think I am confused, sorry for that. Yeah, but I, I think what is described in the challenge description is what you should do. But anything that you find also useful in the tutor tutorial that Abu Bakr gave, we should also use okay. it. So okay. it's, it's, it's all about like, you know, you're not here, you are not at all treated, nor act, you have to act as a student. That means no. it's all okay. about learning as much as you can with the time you have and with the pace that you can do. So that means okay. in the minimum, follow the description because we talked about it and we think that would give you um, at least in a minimum the kind of level of awareness that is required. But if you can go beyond, for example, you like something that Abu Bakr did and you want to use it, we encourage it. And for that even, we, we have additional values that we give to people who go beyond what we say, right? Just the people who are curious or who have, you know, who have explored more, who have time and stuff. I think, yeah. So try, it's a, it is about you being as much as possible kind of familiar with these things so yeah yeah okay thank you great anyone else especially saba elizabeth jerusalem if you have other questions at least i see you in the in my screen there could be others good So hopefully and then it's, yeah, anyone? Yes, I have uh, two yeah. questions. Yeah, you Okay, the first one is, uh, there are four tasks given for us, task one to four, up to four. Yeah. Then uh, on first interview submission, we have to finish only the task one. I think it is uh, just like this, or yeah. it, uh, only task one. So the, the important part, just again to tell you what is like, so let me look at the, you know, the submission, the deliverables, entry. So your employer wants a quick meeting after you have done a first quick pass to the data to achieve this, summarize your finding from task one in seven slides. Yeah, so that's uh, it. Okay, and all the seven slides? Yeah, yeah, uh, all the seven yes. slides. Yeah, so the seven slides are more like as, you know, it's trying to make it so easy so that you can focus on your analysis. So that means on slide one to three, so the just basically, I would say one slide, the first slide, you always have to discuss what are you doing. You know, your understanding of the business, what you're doing, right? 
So in this case, like I am like, okay, in this uh, analysis, we plan to go through the data, telecommunication data, and try to extract insight about the profitability of um, this company. Blah, blah, okay. right? Some, something. And then the second slide should just be like, okay, we have the data. It's always good to just give what, you know, what the data. In the data, we have collected from this number of people, have this number of columns, you know, blah, blah. Like some kind of summarize the data, right? And then you just like, okay, by analyzing uh, uh, each column separately, we get this idea. And so you, you just show a plot, a representative plots, and saying like, okay, you know, this is the case. And then like that. So it's just basically make sense out of it. This is more the guiding principle that just tells you like, at least if, not, if you're confused, you can just do that and you're, you're, you will be done with it. But the point is that you have to understand the business. You have to understand by then, by, the, by Wednesday, you should be able to say about which data, you know, what are you doing? What kind of information is there in the data? And what kind of information so far you managed to extract? So you should be able to answer that, okay? okay so and some of the questions are like exactly shown, you know, that invites during the session for each application, like, you know, because that is very important, social media, Google email, YouTube, Netflix, and gaming, because this gives you the user's activity, right? And so you kind of summarize it. Yeah, okay, go on, sorry. Okay, and, uh, and my other question is, on, yep. the, challenge, on the challenge uh, page six, yeah. uh, on uh, user overview analysis task one, uh, then uh, I started some doing some of them, and first identifying 10 and say customers, and blah, blah, after doing them, uh, on the task 1.1, .1, I do some aggregate uh, per user some of the data. Yeah. And uh, the thing that uh, I didn't understand is on task 1.2. Yeah. You yeah, have got me on page 7 on the, yeah. on the challenge. Yeah. And uh, I have dropped some uh, columns which have uh, much missing values. Yeah. Then uh, this uh, on uh, task 1.2, we are uh, asked to analyze uh, the metrics such as mean, median, and this. Yeah, uh, that's for some of them. Yeah. So if you yeah. know, it's a, the most important part is that you make sense. It's not about you make sense that okay, we drop these columns because they have more than this amount of uh, missing value, so it doesn't yeah. make sense to fill them. Uh, but in later, we will when we do sensitivity test, we will probably do this. You know. It is this that we want, that you take control, you understand why you do that, and you reason out why, you know, what makes sense. And then on other variables that, for example, it's not because you, like some variables, for example, for some columns or features probably have only missing value, let's say 20%. In that case, you say like, okay, for this one, we, we used this and this missing value to, to check also sensitivity. It doesn't bias or it doesn't change the distribution. Great. You know? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, rich on that. But uh, my question is, we calculate uh, these matrices on the columns we have. Mm, I, I mean, we have yeah. some columns. Yeah. And uh, we do this uh, analysis on the columns we have. Yeah, I think. Which that's left the after the, uh, we have uh, yeah. dropped so the. As, as I said, <laughs> at your first reaction should be that. That means that you drop what is not essential. That means like that those with missing value above, let's say, I don't know what your threshold is, let's say 50% or 60%. And then in that case, you might just say like, okay, at first you do only for those uh, columns that have uh, like above, like at least none missing values, like or missing values less than some amount, right? But then later you might say like if we miss, so if you are, when you are doing some kind of special correlation, you might just interpret them. But as I, as I'm saying, given the time, sometimes you might you might you might just go away with it. So I only encourage curiosity here. You could get away with it, but be curious to know if it is really important. For example, if it's with the if by just dropping the the values by still capturing some still more information, 
can you compute some correlation? So if they are, of course, missing value above 90%, then there is no point. But still, if 90% means 10% is like more than 1,000, maybe it makes sense, right? So it's about information content, not just the actual value. If you have like a million rows, you know, even if it's like 10% remaining, 10% is a lot. But if you have 100 data points, then if you throw 90, then you are only left with 10, 10 might not give you much. Okay, okay. okay thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anybody, anything else? Okay, so if not, then hopefully you are clear and please help others uh, to also get, just, you know, you guys just get, get in that mood, be curious, you know, and try to help each other um, and any question ask also so that we can, we can be there uh, to help you. Great, so have a um, good day. And Excuse me, I was raising my hand. But... Ah, where is that? I didn't see, it's like, a... who yeah. is that? Okay, so let me just actually open the part. Okay, uh, Behigu, yeah. I am Behigu. Behigu. I, I wanted to ask you about uh, dropping the columns uh, not ask you first about dropping and you just said yes and I was curious back then to ask you but you didn't see me anyway um, I was trying to analyze the data you gave us yesterday last night mm -hmm. and uh, my finding is that uh, around out of 50, 55 columns around 10 was 50% missing yeah 10 columns out of the 55 its value of 50% is missing. Yeah. And if we drop uh, those 10 columns, which I did, by the way, but uh, when I drop that, um, I have removed my 20% of the data, uh, yeah. like 18%. Yeah. Doesn't that like affect the analyze and the interpretation? It does. It does. So that's why I'm saying, that at first, you probably to just see what is left, you can analyze that clean data. But then you start realizing, I'm throwing so much part of my data, but also as I said, if I have a number of rows, even if it doesn't matter, the number, don't, don't get afraid of the number, you can just drop, like, even if you don't miss, you don't uh, feel the missing value, you can drop all the, the ones that are missing, and you can be left with just only the ones that are not missing, and still that is a large number to still get information. So I would say absolutely it does. When you are throwing more than 10% of your data, you are really, really like, it's not a good analysis. It is acceptable in a certain time bound way, but it's not, it's kind of, you should be curious why, how, what you can do with it. So in, including to missing value, you know, like by dropping just all those missing value and just, using only the remaining. So just the number is just a number. It's like, you know, 50% of a thousand is still 500 is a lot. 50,000 of a million is 500 million thousand, which is still a huge number, right? Hopefully, does that be good? Does that answer? Okay. And Robert? Robert, so, so I, I didn't see before the hands raised because I, I only was looking just at the window, but I see now that if I open the users list, I could see the people raised, who raised hands like in that, which is convenient. So sorry about that uh, for those whom I missed earlier. So Robert, are you, you raised your hand? Do you want to ask? We're talking, probably we we are not hearing you. So a general advice is that always do the easy. Can you hear me? Yes, Robert. You can hear me. Okay, cool. Now we can hear. You. Sorry. So I I just wanted to see if I'm doing the things the right way. Uh, in the in the data set that we that you just you gave us yesterday. 
uh, th there are of course uh, values. There are values that, uh, for example, handset, handset manufacturer, which are actually not numerical. Yeah. So my thinking was that I create another data frame, including only those that I'm going to use uh, to do numerical analysis. Uh, is that the right way or not? Uh, I think it's, uh, for what do you want it? So you can still, that's what, let's assume that's a categorical variable, right? It is a categorical yes. variable. Then if you are counting, group buying and all that, that's fine. If you want to do some kind of regression, sure, you have to translate, it's called, um, you have to do encode, you have to encode it on a certain way. So there are many ways. If the numbers, the different manufacturers, for example, are small, you can do one whole encoding. One whole encoding means it's like one column becomes like if one column, if it has three values, then it it, it gets translated into three columns, and each one will be one zero zero one zero one zero, where one is basically for each of um, blah blah. You know, so you can read more about that. Any other there are other types of encoding. But in this case, most of the time, if it's counting, whatever, you don't have to translate that. You could just do it without, I mean, pandas handle these things easily. Okay. Okay. So I think there is a question in the text. I think, yeah, Milky, that's true. So we could, one could go down, but more than that, as I said, it's like, that's the general advice I give. Sure. First, what is the size of your data? If the size is large, then there's so much of possibility to do so many things. And, and, and second, for the sake of time, I would say, take the simplest you can understand. Maybe just dropping everything and using the clean data. If that's too small, you know, extend it. And then later, once you know that, add some values, let's say just using a 50% threshold and then doing kind of um, a missing value. And then later, maybe just even going up to 20% or even like, you know, some amount where it makes sense, you know, like you may say like, it's called at least that one column must have like 100 value or something like that. And then you miss them, but you kind of uh, uh, treat each of them separately depending on their distribution. And maybe you can use like for some mode, for some mean, depending on, you know, if it's categorical, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to have mean, right? So it's kind of mode is the most important. If it is numerical time, it also doesn't make sense to, to use kind of some kind of mean. It probably makes more sense, some kind of other uh, feeling. If it is kind of actual value, like uh, float, then mean whatever may make sense. So for each of them, when you miss value, when you feel missing value, you should use, of course, accordingly, according to the, the property of that, that, that column. And then you do the analysis, you visualize. And it is just each of them, you start extracting inside the bias. If you notice something like, oh, this is biasing me or this is doing this, record it. That's what's called result. That means like when you do this, then it becomes a story in your narrative. Okay? So that's my general recommendation. Treat it as more like, you know, with your label, just do and then increase the level such that you complete at each point you gain insight. So there is no formula to gain insight. It all depends on people's level and their way of understanding and that. So it's, you have to find that. It is this opportunity that you have now that you can ask. You can do at the same time, you can try to just be like, what am I understanding? It's like, what am I doing? Like, you know, like the purpose, like am I deriving that this company is profitable or like are the users kind of who are using Google more, are they using, you know, more data? Is Facebook because it has images doing this or this or that, you know, are people, you because YouTube probably takes more time, so that means like are they kind of paying more? You know, like you can, this is called hypothesis and kind of you test that hypothesis. Sometimes you generate that hypothesis from your own plots. And then you write all that, you record, just like a lab, you record your insights and then you put them finally as a, as a report. And then, then you have to decide like what is the nice to present because then you will probably have hundreds of observations. You might not, if, you are, if it's a big report, you can give all the report. But if you're not, you have to select. 
That means you have to then select what is essential. Why, how do you select? By looking at, again, the business value. The person probably doesn't care people, about people's behavior. Probably the person uses anything that affects profitability. That means do people more use, like are my customers kind of this, and are, they, are my customers who are actually using more YouTube, who are kind of buying a lot of uh, data, are they actually being satisfied? You know, that's an important question to know. Then it's like whether Am I talking? Was I talking or was I muted? Yes, you were just muted for a second. Okay, I didn't know what, what happened. Yes, yes. Okay, so I, I hope that you heard me, what I was saying. Yes. Okay, great, awesome. So then let's just depart here and hopefully that gave you a good insight and we'll discuss over. Um, Okay, chat. Cheers, guys. Bye.